dear colleagues, I'm delighted to invite Alexei Ivanov to this stage, the, I, the director of IC Marketing. So good afternoon to you all again. Unfortunately, we are a bit pressed for time. This is why I'm going to talk fast. So context advertising. On one hand, this is seen as something trivial and not interesting enough. So you want to listen to, to about bloggers or Instagram or other trendy things. But context advertising, in the broad understanding of this word, in the context of Yandex and Google tools, context advertising helps you get more customers. And by the way, these are the key advertising means for the majority of businesses. If we take a look at the context market advertising, context advertising market, you will see that this is a serious tool, but not everyone is using this tool correctly. When we talk about advertising, we need to talk about it in the context of the audience. Let's say new generation, new attitude to this. It's not so much about changing the generation. Our life is changing really, really fast. So within, the, within one generation, we changed a lot. In, density of informational flows increased. Before social media, you had your news feed in the social media, and you had time for this. Now you're scrolling it up really quickly, and then something catches your attention, and you read this news. News websites, you get a lot of information from them, so you're immersed in this information flow. So even serious, even serious uh, editions and magazines should resort to very catchy headlines. Those which those you could see only in the yellow press before, because they needed to grab your attention. People consume increasingly more content through the mobile devices. Mobile devices are not about small screens. Mobile means new format of interacting with information. That means that we have a break, and during the break, we're looking at the screen. We're in the traffic jam or in the subway. It's just about a several-minute contact. Or we have a drink with a friend, uh, and let's say, let's go to Dominic Republic of Dominicana, um, and then we'll look for, search for the flights. So you, we don't have a lot of time. We need to book straight away, because then we'll sober up. So and if you're looking at something on your desktop, then people understand that you're busy. So they need to, if they ask you a question, they will distract you. But if you are fiddling around with your phone, then for all others around you, they believe that you're in the social media and they can ask your question immediately. So you can get distracted. That means that the website should grab your attention. And now there are more companies which interact with their consumers in the in in the right using the right language. And we didn't have these companies around before. So what do we need to get after an advertising campaign? We need to find our target audience. We need to grab its attention by sending a valid offer. And then you click on this valid offer, and then you don't have enough information on the website, or the website is not updated. But original offer was quite interesting and catchy. Then you need to grab the person's attention to make sure that he wants he or she will call you and would like to book this trip. Then you need to support this intention with a number of other adverts so that that person wants to send a request or an application or get registered. You need to have to prepare, let's say, a statement. Let's say, why do you need to travel to that country? Why do you need to come to us? Why you? There is a number of... Uh, options and so a lot of people advertise in this way so come to us it's not so cold here so don't don't have to be honest you have to, your statement needs to be catchy and that it shouldn't be trivial at all i mean just say it come here it's it's truly it's fine 
it's not enough. So you need to think through the process of interacting with your audience. So somebody will contact you through the website. Where will they come to your website from? What would they know at this point in time? When we click on the website link, we already know something. We have seen an advert in the social media or somewhere else. So every time you click on something, you have an expectation. Every time you prepare your website, you have your own expectations, what you want that person to do. Think otherwise. Think what these people want to get when they click on your website. So they don't owe you anything. Any travel operator, any tour operator, they have these booking forms. It's a nightmare. Show me the person who takes pleasure out of filling in these forms. So we can, I, I can sort of understand it if we talk about professional markets, but a normal person should not be doing this. You are forcing him or her to do something which they don't want to do. Let's say I look, looked at the website about uh, the Republic of Dominicana. What, what should I do next? Do I need to post it in the website? Do I need to ask my friends? Do I need to book? So you need to know what action should be taken after that. But I need to see this. Every, the, the, the more fine you segment your target group, the, the better. Let's say a tour to Denmark. You want to travel to Denmark. What do you want? It's got tra travel to Denmark, Finland, Sweden. We don't have a lot of that space for the statement, for Ed Edward's statement is very limited. And then we, there is a number, th then there is the name of a brand. The brand is probably meaningless at this stage. So we click on this link, and uh, this is where the nightmare starts. You, you will become exposed to the culture of Denmark, Sweden. You can say this anything. Uh, you, you can say this about any country. You, it's impossible to travel somewhere we get, without getting exposed to the to the culture. But what is what is so special about Denmark? We see mostly Sweden, Finland, and Norway mentioned here. But I was looking for a trip to Denmark. Why did I get here? There is nothing about Denmark here, and just. And this rating is zero. So that, there you go. If, if this, if you see your website here, don't get offended. I can. There are numerous examples of this kind. And this is the picture of you sitting in front of the screen, thinking, "I wanted to uh, to go to Denmark." So you have spent money to get me on your website. So I clicked on it, and it seems fine, which in reality it is not. Customers value their time and. In recent years, we are trained to resolve matters faster. Let's say, now it is easier to book a tour than to buy a loaf of bread, because to buy some bread you need to go outside, you need to probably clear snow from, the pool, from your door. It is a lot easier for me to book a tour. Within an hour I can make arrangements with my friends, agree on the hotel, then one hour is enough to get booked completely. But don't turn it into an ordeal for me. There is a big number of examples when we had to take wait for 40 minutes, 40 minutes in Moscow. And now Yandex Taxi, if they tell you that you will have to wait for 11 minutes, that's, that's, um, that's a problem. Because I expect in 15 minutes, I expect to be in Belaruska station. Because if, if you make me wait, I'll miss my plane. But you may be forgiven to think that you have a good website because other companies have worse, worse websites. But let's say you wanted to go somewhere and you didn't have time to properly choose something. So you go to Facebook and you see these posts. <laughs> Please let me know where should I where should I stay in Greece, which hotel, which island, and so on. And you have a number of comments there, well, links to the websites, to the hotel websites, and so on. So people trust these recommendations because the majority of these recommendations are given by those people who you know. Let's say 
that people has recommended this to me, and I know that person. Sometimes you can have um, SMM people from travel agencies sending comments to, posting comments to these uh, posts. But personal recommendations gain more trust. That means that through our website we need to gain trust faster than this person will, than through the social media. So don't forget about this. Don't forget about customers' trust. That's a very important factor, and it is important how you gain this trust. Think about who these people will interact with after they go to your website, because they will have to tell somebody, their partner. Let's say you they click on the hotel. I like this hotel, so I need to tell about it to my friends, to my spouse, to my wife, whatever. So what should I tell about this hotel? What what is what is there to to attract attention? Let's say check-in time, 2 p.m. That's really great. Describe a picture. It's difficult to use words to describe a picture, but we need some catchy information which can be conveyed on other people. Don't forget about emotions. Let's say spa center extra charge, jacuzzi, extra charge. Instead of saying that there is a tremendous spa available next door or a good beach volleyball um, site, free of charge. Free of charge, well, it's not the key point. So dry information is not stirring emotion. It does not make customer feel that they want to travel there. And when you add up complications of the mobile website to that, then you see the full, full picture. Think about when people can interact with you. Let's say when people uh, are at work, the, they will have to send information through the chat board or through the chat. But if it is during holidays, then you will probably would like to watch a video together with your wife or a husband, whatever. Here is me logging on this website through the through my mobile phone. See, great picture, but nothing to tell about to my friends. And, mm, why should I go there? I don't understand. The number of logons from mobile devices to different websites is increasing. So if, here is the chart showing the number of access from mobile devices and desktop computers. And desktop access goes down significantly. It is easier to access any website from your mobile phone or a tablet. Also, think about the time when you display these adverts to people. There are research which states that people um, tend to be interested in different types of data at different time of the day. Let's say you, you have limited budgets if you place your adverts in the morning, but in the morning people are more concerned about work-related issues, so that's not a very good spend of your money. You can analyze it better and use it to get, do it together with Yandex metrics. Let's take a look at when people do some actions on the website. That can help you change your conversion. And conversion in different time of the day and different day of the week may be different. It may be driven by weather. Let's say you want to travel to some countries when it is cold, or in some other in, in other cases people start thinking about summer holidays when they see the first sun see think about where your customers are located let's say yandex had had a had a research <coughs> regarding those people uh, what uh, people in the internet serve when they are in the subway and where are at home so you don't serve in the in the subway for porn because there are lots of people around you right that's not very con convenient but also elderly people tend to look up things related to country houses and farming. And it's not very convenient, again, in the subway. But sports-related items, they are looked are sought after by younger people. And they can do that on the, on the internet. So make sure you outline your objective correctly. Make sure that you understand how many customers you want to gain and how much are you ready to spend for this. Don't you, you need to have a very clear idea about these things. Who is my customer? Why my customer would like to travel to that country? What is he or she concerned about? What do they like? 
and set realistic targets. Don't don't think don't think that you can have pay 100 rubles per click and that will get you a lot of customers. No, that's not the case. So there is a good training video available here, and there is a help section in the presentation. So it is advertising, called context advertising, is, su is such that Yandex is asking you to choose, uh, let's say, um, search uh, based on which it will display results. So we have the search, we have the wording, but we need to think the customer, what are people looking for? What do we need to display to them? And which side do we need to take them to? Advertising tools are becoming ever smarter, but for now they can't do everything instead of us. So when we see the advertising search, it turns out that uh, we seek to show specific advertising to a specific person, to the person that will be the most interested. Of course, there are different tour operators, and uh, we want to see the tour operators uh, that uh, will be not too expensive for us and so on. And there is this auto-targeting when Yandex understands uh, on its own that if a person introduces some search, Yandex understands what this person really wanted, because Yandex sometimes understands better than you what should be shown to a certain person. You should use analytics, not just metrics, but reports. Unfortunately, sometimes uh, the, a company is big, and the marketing company should show that uh, on the left, there should be some growth. So actually, on the right, there should be more than on the left. But you need to understand what stands behind those figures. Uh, you need to understand how many customers came from each channel. So if you use some analytics and some advertising doesn't work, you just switch it off. Maybe there are some phrases which do not bring calls. You should switch them off. But there may, might be different reasons why this audience is not converted into orders or applications. So you should look into it. You should test different pages uh, and specific traffic. This is the so-called chess testing. You show one advertising campaign for one hour and another one for the second hour. You test them because if there is some snow which falls, then you actually can assess both advertising campaigns. And in tourism, there are a lot of external factors, both political and others. So if you just run one advertising for one week and another one for the second week, it's not the right testing. You need to understand what data means what. In different reports, you can have different numbers you should know the difference between those reports and what it means. I don't have enough time. I can tell you about it separately. But even if you have many applications from your website, it's not always your target audience. Sometimes people say, it's great that we have so many people on our chat. But the challenge is as follows. If a person is at work, and asks a question. He is told, ask or well, call this phone number. But this person doesn't really want to call the phone because he is at work. He can't uh, make a phone call. And uh, people say it's great we had a request in chat. But in actual fact, this person starts to hate this company. Or, for example, when there is a request on the chat, but you don't sell anything. Sometimes people can see this. This is your application. This is your manager. And on the bottom is uh, written, your manager, Dmitry. And some people see this contradiction because there is a lady on the photo, and there is the name Dmitry, a male's name. Um, written down, and some people just don't want to contact uh, this manager. So you should understand each call, each type of advertising, and if you just measure calls and you don't know what happened later with them, 
then you can get into a situation which is becoming very frequent. That is uh, some artificial calls. Uh, there are services like you do. For example, for 500 rubles, you can call, make calls to 15 to 18 companies. And you can also visit this website, click on this banner, make a call, ask a question. A person doesn't know that he or she deceives uh, someone. Uh, he or she thinks that he, they are secret customers, uh, but they haven't bought anything. And you need to understand how it works. So you need be, to be careful about it. There's also the advertising network. And it's a huge number of websites where Yandex, understanding the interests of their customers, show some advertising. This is one example. It should be something relevant for me. And you need to understand that I was reading something else. I need to be lured away. I need to be attracted with this. And a lot of advertisers show the same advertising, both in the search and on the website. It's easier to do it like that. But Yandex is catching up with them. And this is a huge layer of uh, interesting interaction with the audience, because the audience wasn't looking for this at the moment, but they need to they understand that it's attractive for them. But we need to understand where to attract them, where they should go. I have very little time. Don't I? I have very little time. Well, if I'm late for my plane, then I will stay here till evening. So what information should we leave about ourselves? Uh, for example, if a person does some search, chooses what mm, he wants, uh, going to Italy with two kids, then this information can go to Yandex. Then we can choose the segment of uh, how many people have more than two kids. Well, those numbers are mm, done for you. And then you can see that there are a lot of families like this. And you just uh, write a message or an announcement like this. So it's really attractive. So very often I'm asked, is there a potential of improving the existing advertising campaign? You have a campaign. Maybe it's good. Maybe it's bad. And here are the seven points showing that it's not very good, that you can improve it. Let's look at the target indicators. When you ask her what you do within the campaign, sometimes the expert tells you we need to spend such and such amount, but he shouldn't think about the money that is spent. He should think about the number of clients to be attracted. So when someone comes up to you with some advertising, you need to understand the specifics of advertising. There should be no mistakes uh, in their advertising. And sometimes if a company works together with an agency, I have a special slide about this. Sometimes agency gets a percentage uh, from the revenue budget. What's the result? The result is that uh, to earn money, the agency needs uh, to increase your budget, that's number one, and to make sure that there is profit here, it should occupy less with you, because uh, it's uh, the number of uh, man hours spent. So this really forces uh, your uh, contractors to work less efficiently with you. And you need to understand that when working with people, you should always motivate them correctly. Sometimes there's an illusion that if we link the amount of money we pay to our contractor to the number of views on the website, it's not so good. If you get 1,000 requests from the website per month and you want to get 2,000 requests, you think the agency will now make everything possible to make it 2,000, but it's not so simple. To make it 2,000, the agency needs to spend not twice as much time, but maybe three times as much time. And the agency will just not uh, 
try to do this because the agency has costs which are measured in man hours. If you work with someone, the most simple method is not just to run away to another agency, but you should do the testing. Take one advertising campaign for one hour, one hour on, one hour off, and take it with uh, the advertising uh, agency. And uh, this is how you exclude all the external factors. And if you want to employ someone, be very cautious about it. You also need an expert as an employee, an expert uh, who understands all those tools, uh, who knows the ropes of your business. And uh, this person needs staff. Sometimes people try to find an expert who will do everything single-handedly. And there are very few experts on the market. Sometimes uh, people just uh, take a manager who pretends to be an expert. So very frequently there are experts, there are people who are hired as experts, and this is how they communicate. They make a lot of mistakes in their chat. There are a lot of smart words, but no one understands what it is all about. And they tell me, well, we didn't understand what he is writing, but uh, the words are so advanced. But uh, there is a quote by Einstein who said, if you can't explain something with simple words, then you don't understand it completely. So if you talk uh, to someone who communicates like that, don't hire them. If uh, there are some people like you in the room, I apologize. But you should work with those experts uh, who speak the normal language. And you should not trust free of charge audits. Sometimes there are some free audits made, but this is a manipulation of data, actually, uh, to scare you. For example, they take some requests, uh, they take some uh, e-commerce reports, and tell you that they do not work in your company because you just uh, sell individual tours, and they tell us, you have a catastrophe, it's a disaster, but you should um, verify them, you should check and think twice about it. Uh, thank you very much. Unfortunately, I don't have any time left for the Q&A session. If you have any other questions, here's my colleague, Natalia. So you come up to her, because I will have to catch my plane. Alexei, thank you very much for your presentation.